Week two of training camp, Chris. First pad of practice. And we were right there. We were right we're there. Still, we're still here. We're still here. Speaking of that training camp. We're going to have highlights from that training camp practice yesterday. Just gonna, You'll see that just spliced throughout our conversation here, Chris, because we're right here. Here. Right here. We're one. We are. We are aligned. But who's the one that's going to get left off the roster? Oh. They won't Let's be here. The, they'll, they'll be over there. They'll, they'll be over there. They'll be over, over there. there. <laughs> Let's <laughs> get this sucker started. <laughs> the state of North Carolina covers 53,000 square miles. It is the habitat of the feared Carolina Panthers. Get dialed in, Panthers fans, for an in-depth look at your team. Exclusive interviews. Locker room insight. Let's huddle up for Panthers Playbook. Here are your hosts, Dennis Cox and Chris Lee. Welcome back to another episode of Panthers Playbook. That is Chris Lee. Dennis Cox here with you as well. Make sure you subscribe here yeah. on Panthers Playbook on 99.9 The Fans YouTube page, yeah. wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Um, right there is where you're going to find us. And leave comments below because, Chris, we're talking training camp practice week number two. We were there. Actually, well, I would say I was there on Tuesday for the first pad of practice. You and I were both there for a bit last week. And I will say this. Pretty spirited affair, a lot of competitiveness, a lot of up-tempo, little shoving matches and stuff here and there, nothing crazy, nothing to get all blown up about. But, man, it was pretty electric for that first pad of practice on Tuesday. But you know what, though? I like it. You know what I'm saying? I love it. Like, I love it's, it. it's one of those things where it looked like yesterday, what was it? Um, it was Davion Clowney, um, you know, hitting Chuba Hubbard too hard, and he yeah. kind of went after him and stuff like that. That's why you bring in Jadavian Clowney. Mm -hmm. because he's going to be a little bit of a bully. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's he's not going to come in, this nice guy, and try to, you know, uh, be friendly to everybody. He's going to ruffle some fe feathers. If things are going to go wrong during the season, guess who's going to be – who's going to obviously show yeah. things are going to go wrong after the game is over in the locker room. Um, and I think traditionally the Panthers haven't kept those guys around uh, over the last few years. Yeah. I think that's a mistake, right? Mm -hmm. Like I remember back in it was the 2019 season when uh, Ron Rivera got fired and they brought in Bruce Irvin, who was towards the end of his career. And Bruce Irvin in the locker room while the media was there would always be like, man, this some bull, you know, like stuff like <laughs> that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like he was it. like that. Yeah. And so, but he was used to winning. He came from Seattle. He was a part of, uh, of their great defense that was out there that Dave Canales saw on the other end every day because he was a part of the offensive coaching staff. So you're going to need guys like this who's going who to push the envelope, who's going to try to bring out the best out of everybody. And now Chuba Hubbard is going to realize, okay, that guy's going to be there, uh, and he's going to try to put his all into me, just like every defensive end edge rusher is going to try to do when I run the ball during the 17 weeks of the season. And we and, and I actually had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Tommy Tremble, which you're going to hear that conversation here in a moment. He actually talked about the hit and Chuba Hubbard popping back up and everything like that. So Tommy Tremble is going to give his own takes on it uh, from being right there on the, the side of the field. Tommy Tremble still not practicing fully because he's dealing with an injury. But nonetheless, everyone that I talked to yesterday, both a couple players, also including Mike Boone, who's a running back trying to make the roster, along with Tremble and a couple of the people in the organization, the competitive nature of the team is greatly increased than what it has been over recent years and just yes. competition battles. We're going to dive into competition battles that we're going to see for the roster because there there's like six, seven, eight spots that, that are really still trying to be figured out. But Chris, the thing that I noticed everyone saying is that the competitive nature, not only is it coming from veteran players like Clowney or Shaq Thompson, or even guys like Adam Thielen, which by the way, he had a highlight catch against uh, JC Horn uh, in some red zone one V ones yesterday. Uh, or as I say on Tuesday, but Woo! it's Dave Canales that's driving it too. Like Dave mm -hmm. Canales and Dan Morgan talked about mm -hmm. having a competitive nature and competitive, uh, uh, you know, situations for guys trying to make the roster. Yeah. And they set that tone and we yeah. noticed it on Tuesday, that first fully padded practice, the culture that they want to set. Good start. First, again, one padded practice. But you're trying to set the tone for the rest of camp and the rest of your season. They showed it, man. I'm not going to lie. If you're a Panthers fan, you got to be excited about the culture and the tone that they're trying to set. 
I saw it last week when they were just in, in helmets and jerseys, you yeah. know, and, and I can't imagine what it was like seeing it in person uh, with pads on because, um, you know, one of the things I was thinking about, and we'll, we'll get into this a little bit later, uh, I was looking at the wide receiver room. I was looking at uh, the, the, uh, the DBs. I was looking at the linebackers. I was, like, scratching my head, like, who's going to make the team? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because – it, it really didn't look like a drop off. You know, sometimes when you go watch these practices, you can see an obvious drop off from the ones to the twos to the threes. And I think with the threes, there is a little bit of a drop off. There's always. Yeah, there's not. The, the twos can get in there and, and really, you know, make it very interesting. And um, and, and there was a it was a very spirited practice last week. I can't imagine what you uh, what you witnessed out there, but they, they're definitely creating that competition. They're creating the dogs <laughs> that they want. And that's the main word that we've heard all off season dogs. Well, one of those guys that talked about the competitiveness, Tommy Tremble tight end going into his fourth year, still only 23 years old. Here's Tommy Tremble talking about that competitive nature and the culture that's been established under Dave Canales. All right. Being joined here by Carolina Panthers tight end. That is Tommy Tremble. All right, Tommy, you've had a couple different head coaches here in the NFL so far. What has the culture been like with Dave Canales as head coach? Today was the first day of pad of practice. What's the culture been like? What, how, how different has it been? I think collectively as a whole team, really being able to buy into what he's talking about. Yeah. And we all want to win the season. We all yeah. are tired of the stigma around the Panthers. We don't want that. We work all too hard for that. And he gives us that boost, that belief that we anything comes up, we can talk to him and build on it. There's no, There's no any type of feelings we all have the same goal and that's amazing man i love it how has your confidence level gone up i think um especially over the last few years having really good vets like ian thomas mm -hmm. colin thompson uh hayden hurst those kind of guys stefan sullivan those guys really helped build my confidence when i got here as a young kid at 20 years old and now going into my fourth year i got all the confidence in the world because of them and so um because of them, my coaches, and everyone we've had, it's uh, it's really built me up for this moment. A lot of a lot of turnover, at least especially on the offensive side of the ball. Again, new coaches, different guys and groups that are coming in. But how have the guys who have been here in the past, yourself, Bryce, Thielen, guys that carried over from last year, how much does the motivation from last year carry over and put these new guys in the new coaching staff? I think it's uh, it's hard not to see it, man. These guys, we want to win. We want to compete. Everyone works their butt off to give their best, and not only earn respect in the league, but earn respect for ourselves, earn respect for the team we play for, for the Carolinas themselves. We, we all thrive for that. And so um, all of us, especially from last year, that felt that kind of pain, we don't ever want to go through that again. Pretty spirited practice today, again, first pad of practice here at Panthers training camp. Who's kind of driving that competitive nature? Is it, is it coming from Coach Canales? Is it guys on the field? Is it a combination of both? I love it because it's coming from both the coaches and the mm -hmm. players. You know, some defensive guys hollering at it, defensive guys going hard, some offensive guys calling it out, waiting for it. They're not, they're excited. They can't wait till pads were on today. Shuba Hubbard got hit. Uh, in the middle of practice, he didn't complain, he didn't whatever. He loves that stuff because he knows he's going to go the next day even harder. And so I think all of us are buying into that culture of what we're trying to build. I think uh, the one thing you can always guarantee at training camp, uh, when wide receivers and tight ends make a catch, they're going to let you know about it. If the ball is not caught, the DBs are going to let you know about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that trash talk, it never goes away. No, never, man. But that's what being a competitor is. That's what playing at the highest level, you got to have fun some way. And some guys gain their confidence from that. Some guys gain their confidence from talking crap, talking whatever. But I love it because it brings the best out of both parties, man. Awesome. Tommy, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Appreciate thanks, you. Man. All right, Chris. So after Tommy Tremble, we have to get into the conversation again. You mentioned it. Who makes this roster? All right. The competitive nature of this team, the way with the kickoff returns are set up now, we saw a lot, especially when they were doing even last week and including on Tuesday, we saw Xavier Leggett and Amir smith Marset set to return together. We saw uh, Raheem Blackshear and a guy we're going to talk to here in a little bit, Mike Boone. Those guys paired together as returners when returning kickoffs because the way the rules are set up, we're going to see a lot of kick returns. So versatility matters. The more you can do, the better. So the question is, who gets cut? Who makes it? Now, Chris, you were telling me before we started recording, you say there are only three locks at wide receiver right now? In my opinion. Okay. Tell um, you know, it, but I, I think, of course, Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen, 
and and Xavier Leggett. Like those are the guys that I think that you have the most uh, invested in. So like they're not going to go anywhere. After that, who's really going to make the team, right? Like mm-hmm. uh, I think Jonathan Mingo has shown uh, really good flashes, right? So yeah. there's a there's definitely an argument for him for sure. I thought David Moore looked really good last week uh, as well, um, just showing what he can do. Amir mm-hmm. Smith Marset um, brings the returner uh, part of it. So does he make it because he has that? And then you have guys like Jalen Coker, who's young, who was an undrafted free agent. Um, do you think about making him? To me, he hasn't really stood out uh, in practice so far. Um, but do you look at him and say, like, you know, I see somebody we can draft and de- we can develop. We didn't draft him. We can develop yeah. later on. I don't know. Uh, Devin Carter, somebody who they had last week um, uh, on a uh, tryout, ended up you know being signed to the roster. Um, you know, I'm interested to see what he looks like. I don't know, you know, I hadn't had a chance to see him, but I do remember when they had the player tryouts. I saw him last week mm-hmm. out there. Former Terrace NC State Marshall, guy, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Terrace Marshall Jr. has been looking pretty good so far. Yeah. So, like, what's how are you gonna fill out the rest of that room? It's it's gonna be very interesting to see. And honestly, I like Mike Strawn. You know, for Practice a long squad, time. Mike practice squad Mike for a long time he he's the person that had the longest reception on the what was it the uh the 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 Thursday night uh the Bears Chicago game. game yeah he had the longest reception of the season at one point yeah. uh before uh we got to uh Green Bay but like my goodness you know so it's they're really creating that competition so I, it makes me feel good because whoever is going to be six I don't know if they're going to carry six or seven but whoever's going to be six for that it's going to have to be top notch because there are so many other people trying to make mm-hmm. the roster for that spot. And um, they're, they're getting guys who's going to push even the ones and twos and threes. So this is where health comes in, into factor here is because Tommy Tremble's still dealing with the injury. How long is it going to take for him to come back? Do you keep a Stefan Sullivan as an extra tight end? And in that case, are you keeping a fourth tight end or are you only keeping five wide receivers? Also the, the injury to Sam Franklin on defense, are you carrying an extra DB does that take away another spot? The Rashad Penny retirement, not sure he was going to make the team anyway. We'll dive into that here in a little bit. But does that open up for Raheem Blackshaw? Or did be, because you have so many other good returners, do you not keep Blackshaw knowing Jonathan Brooks is returning? So there's there's some different tweaks and stuff here and there that they're really going to have to figure out. But here's something uh, someone in the Panthers organization told me on Tuesday when it comes to Dave Canales and offense. In Tampa Bay last year as the offensive coordinator, he was very very intentional about continually rotating his receivers during the course of the game. So he would, yeah, he had his top guys, you know, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, but he was very intentional about using his third, fourth, and fifth receiver out there multiple times and giving guys like Evans and Godwin a rest for a snap or two here and there because as the game progressed and as the season progressed, those guys were a little bit healthier just because you took a snap or two away here or there. It didn't reduce their production level, but it's one or less one or two less snaps you had to worry about during the course of a game. So he was very intentional about rotating guys. We actually saw this on Tuesday during practice where sometimes it was Adam Thielen, Lee Gett, and Amir Smith-Marset out there together. And there's times where it was Deontay Johnson and Jonathan Mingo out there, and they had a two tight end set with, with Sanders and, and Ian Thomas or whatever it might be. So he's very intentional about rotating guys through to keep that, especially with Smith Marset's return ability and the way he was working into the offense, I think Smith Marset makes the team because he can do a lot of different things. And I, so I think that's yep. a guy that thinks going to make it. Mingo looked good. Again, Terrace Marshall Jr. had a couple really nice catches, but also another guy who actually showed out yesterday, a guy they brought over from Tampa who has some return ability was Devin Tompkins. He's super undersized, but man, that dude made some plays in the first pad of practice. The competitive nature is there. And with Leggett and Johnson, added to the top along with Thielen who didn't miss a beat. It feels like the dude has not slowed down. There's more depth. There's more depth to that wide receiver room. I really like when what I'm seeing so far, you know, one thing I think is very interesting is uh, the difference between last year and, and this year. You know, of course the team is never going to say like, you know what they feel like the differences are. It's new year, blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah. Um, but it felt like we could probably we could probably, uh, you know, predict the the fifty three to start the Pretty season easily. with maybe like 
off by four or five. You know Maybe. what I'm saying? Max. But we were kind of talking last year who's going to be on our on the roster, and you were kind of like, yeah, you know, this this guy, this guy, mm-hmm. this guy. And it was pretty easy to see. You kind of know certain people are there as holdovers. You're just there to push and show your opportunity and, you know, flash some tape uh, when um, you get to the preseason game and, you know, thank you for your service. Maybe you're going to hit the practice squad. Maybe not. Mm-hmm. It's not like that this year. No. It, it really feels like out of the 90 on the roster – uh, right now, it really feels like there's a ch- there's a good chance for 75, and that is one of those things where uh, it's gonna that's just, that just makes the team better. Now we we have certain spots where we know who's gonna be plugged in on spots. We know the starters along the offensive line, but when Josh Nijman comes comes back from injury, is he gonna push Icky a little bit more? You know Maybe. what I'm saying? Like, you know, is is he gonna potentially, you know, cause some chaos right there on the offensive line? Um, you know, what about linebackers? You know, how how's that gonna fare? Is somebody gonna on push Shaq? Is somebody gonna somebody gonna push the edge rushers? Uh, they brought in Kamiko Toure since last time we uh, we did this show. You know, how's that gonna fare for for somebody like DJ Johnson, Amari Barno, or others? You know, and Amari Barno is still injured, but yeah, like, how's that DJ gonna be? Him. DJ Wanham, how's that going to fare for uh, those other guys? So it is going to be very interesting to, to, you know, see what ends up happening. I just like the fact that um, we, we don't know. And I think that makes for a better team. That's a great point. Yeah. We don't know. And we, again, we talked about the injuries. Uh, Josh Neiman still recovering from an injury. He hasn't practiced yet. Do you, is he going to start on physically unable to perform list? Like how ready is he going to become week one? Do you keep an extra offensive lineman as a precaution? Okay, does then that push somebody out? Mm-hmm. Um, again, DJ Wanham, is he going to start on physically unable to perform list because he's still recovering from his quad surgery they had in the offseason? Okay, so you're going to keep an extra end or the Sam Franklin injury, so you're keeping an extra DB. So all these injuries and stuff, you got to keep an extra to, to, to compensate for that, which means someone else doesn't make it. Tough decisions, Chris. I was going to bring up running back really quick oh, yeah. because um, Rashad Penny did uh, retire. He retired. Um, you know, and just last week he was telling Mike K uh, of the Charlotte Observer, like, hey, if I'm healthy, I feel like I'm one of the better running backs in the league. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was a uh, big talk from him because, you know, he has shown a lot of great flashes. But again, the health part. Right. So former first round pick. I was thinking last year, as, as I mean, uh, last week as well. You know, uh, right now I'm not thinking about Jonathan Brooks because he's on a PUP list. Uh, but, of course, when he comes back, that's going to – somebody's spot's going to get taken. Oh, Let's yeah. say they take three. We know Chuba. We know Miles because of the contract situation. Mm-hmm. It could be Rashad Penny. So what does that do with somebody like Raheem Blackshear, right? Mm-hmm. Now we don't have to worry about Rashad Penny, but that's one nope. of the things I was thinking about last week. Uh, but now, you know, you had a chance to talk with Mike Boone. Like, what happens with him? And he's sure. showing that he can return as well. Do you want to have four guys? Because you have two guys who have returnability uh, between him and Blackshear. There's a lot of deci- decisions to be made here. And if you do that, of course, you mentioned it earlier, you take away from maybe a tight end room or a wide receiver room. Um, you know, it's there's a lot of different possibilities here. And I'm open to it. I just hope that, that, uh, that for their sake, they make the right calls as far as injuries are concerned. Oh yeah, I'm sure they know what they're looking at when it comes down to the smarts and who can play the game the best. But I hope they're making the right call as far as injuries. Speaking of Mike Boone, let's get to that combo. First pad of practice done. How's it feel to get that thing out of the way? Oh uh, yeah, man, it felt good to get back in the groove, bang a little bit, you know, uh, get our body back callous. You know, it felt good. It was very competitive. So, good day one. I, I am not gonna lie. I don't miss the first practice of padded practice from football. I do not miss it one bit. But I'm sure it's nice to again get out there, finally get this one out of the way. What were some of the things that you took away from today's practice that helped you specifically try and make a roster spot here? Oh uh, yeah, man, just uh, compete. You know, uh, that's every day, not mm-hmm. just with pads, but uh, you know everything gets a little more physical, a little more amped up. But yeah. you know, just just compete. You know, do your job and uh, fly around and finish. You know, so. I saw you working a lot on special teams. Do you like the new kickoff rules? Ah, oh, man, I don't know yet. It's a good opportunity for runners, you sure. know, for, for the return guys. So I'm looking forward to see, you know, how that plays out. But, um, you know, Raheem back there, so I'm pretty sure, you know, we'll, we'll make it happen. And 
looking forward to how that turns out. Well, I'm sure, were you covering kicks as well? Were you doing that too? Yes. The, I more, do, the more you can do. Yeah. So uh, describe what it's like out there. It's completely different. No one's ever done it before. Like, how do when you're being taught this? What's going through your head? It's like, wait, I gotta wait till someone catches the ball before I can run. Yeah, that's a little. That's the most. That's the part you gotta get to get used to the most. But um, they're closer to us. You know, it's like a five yard thing. So if you're a guy that can slip blocks, you know, this will be an advantage to you. So um, you know, I'm looking forward to putting in the coaching with Tracy and executing his game plan and going out and making plays. All right, final thing here for you. You've been in Minnesota, been in Denver, been in Houston. What's the culture like on this team compared to what you've experienced in the NFL so far? Oh, man, it's amazing, dude. Uh, like I said, I, I'm harping on the competitiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what's sticking out to me the most. You know, uh, I've been around, you know, a lot of places we compete, but uh, guys are flying around. You know, guys are locked in. You know, it's exciting to see everyone buying in to Coach Dave, uh, you know, and on offense specifically. You know, guys are, you know, we're, we're setting the tone, you know, so that's that's – the most different than uh, you know a lot of places I've been. He's talked about that competitiveness. Coach Canales has. And, like, is he the one that's really driving the competitive nature here, or is there, is there other guys on the team, or is it a combination of that? Uh, it's a uh, exactly. It's a combination. You know, it's trickling down. You know, he's he's saying it. Other guys are. You know, when we're the guys doing it. You know, you have leaders um, specifically. Um, you know, Bryce is echoing it. You know, uh, my position group specifically. You know, you got Chuba, yeah. Miles. Everybody's just harping on it. You know, and we're just you know getting on ship and doing what we got to do, man. All right, Chris, I want to wrap on this. Actually, two things. One, speaking to Jonathan Brooks, someone actually talking in the organization yesterday said, you know, he might be like a Jameer Gibbs with Detroit last season. Came off an injury, start off the year, slowly worked him in because they had David Montgomery, and then all of a sudden, second half of the year, fresher legs, boom, explodes. And it's a big part of the offense. Maybe Jonathan Brooks can have that type of year. But here's something to keep out, uh, in mind as well when it comes to the roster, Chris. Carolina Panthers have first dibs on waiver claims. They get first dibs. So anybody that gets put through waivers that gets cut from training camp Ooh. across the entire NFL, the Panthers Ooh. get first dibs. Ooh. First <laughs> dibs. So there's a, let's say there's a corner that they really like that a team maybe is trying to push through down to the practice squad or something like that. That's our guy. We're going to claim him, which again pushes someone off the current Panthers roster out. Panthers get first dibs. That's something to keep in mind. They get first waiver claim through the first three weeks of the season, Chris. It's a beautiful sight. <laughs> it's a beautiful sight. A beautiful I mean, sight. you know, it's it, it. This is a good place to be in, you know. And of course, like it because it's because they sucked last year. Well, right? yeah. But <laughs> but you know, to be in this position now, you know. I, I was listening to Dave Canales, um, mm -hmm. you know, through training camp and just the way he's talking, the, the way how organized he sounds. He sounds clear. I understand what he's trying to get across. I understand the message. There's no hidden meanings or whatever. He doesn't seem to be caught off guard by anything. And he's very decisive, even in just the way that he uh, talks to the media. man. And I was just thinking if I was a player and everybody seems to be raving about him, you just kind of know that. You're looking at somebody who's special. You're looking at somebody who's going to mm -hmm. end up winning. And I said to myself after uh, Tuesday's press conference with him, it's like, I hope it's with the Panthers, but that guy that I just listened to mm -hmm. is going to win a lot. Oh, yeah. If it's here, I hope. I hope. If it's somewhere else, but that guy is going to win a lot. And it's just something about it. He has some, some intangibles that I, I just can't explain. But you can hear it when you're really listening to somebody. Sometimes you just know that this person has it. And it's Dave Canales. And it really does start from the top to bottom. It feels like this combination of head coach and GM has more control over the team than what we've seen over the last five, six years or so. Because of this, Chris, the alignment. They're here. The alignment. It's all right here. Because they're right they here, are Chris. here. They're right here. Right here. They're right here. Here, here, aquí, for our Spanish-speaking friends. Aquí, right here, aquí, and we want you to be right here with us. Aquí, and in the comment section, by liking, subscribing, all those things, leave your thoughts in the comments below and ask us yeah, questions. You, you're free to call me lame. That's fine. That's fine. You're free to call me lame because you're still watching. That's fine. That's fine. Because <laughs> we're here. Because we're here. We're aquí. By the way, one week. From the episode, the time this drops, Chris, preseason game.
Preseason I'm game ready. one week. I'm ready. It's either going to be a great surprise or a massive letdown, but I'm ready. Either way, well, we're, we're going to be here for you. We're going to be here. We're going to have an episode for you after the preseason game on Thursday next week. Till next time, you got to be good.